All right, come on screen, testing, 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 testing. All right. Close that one down. Not quite what I want. Trying to get the screen uh, adjusted as you might may or may may or may not be able to see. All right, try this middle screen. Hmm. Give me a moment to. Screen should go small on one side. It's just uh, maybe this one. Maybe I don't realize what I'm looking at. Yeah, I do realize what I'm looking at. That is a little bit weird. Give me a second here again. Where'd you hide at? Great. Great, 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 great. Give me a. Where the hell does the screen go? Let's try that one more time. I'll just come into here. There we go. And I guess I don't I don't get to set it up the way I normally do. I don't know what's going on. That's so pretty damn weird. Cool, it keeps changing things. Uh, I will not be maybe I'll be able to see a chat. Um I can't even type anything. So if I see a comment to challenge my wording, my words, I won't be able to see it. Sorry, maybe I can come over here and peek now and then. Um, that's that's a little bit troublesome. You guys participating. Uh, make it fun. Nope, I can't even type anything. I'm sure this will troll. Here we go. I'm sure my comments will upset a few people on this one. Uh, a lot of people deal with engines, things like that. So here we go. Test and hello. Let me try this. Oh, I said hell. I'll, I'll put the O on it. Okay. Let's jump into it. Let's jump into it. I've got just a few videos up here to share. Let me... This is going to be a heat combustion issue. Let's jump right to the cylinder head. And I'll tell you the theory I'm working on. And you pressure gases. And you see you fall into it or not. These are going to be important. This will tell you the temperature of a flammable, um, you know, 495 degrees. That's your fuel, your typical fuel. Real important is this carbon, carbon monoxide, 1,128 degrees Fahrenheit is his ignition point. Why is that important? Because I'm saying that cylinder heads are designed wrongly or they need improvement. And I've gone to, I've looked at so many machine shop videos. I've been dying to find somebody who says something that uh, is magical. I found the horsepower guys that are all about horsepower and testing. And I can't find them crossing the line into where I, what I'm talking about. Close though close they're into the heads and this came close for so my theory is all right this is a guy some type of mechanical engineer um he's showing the egr value the recycling of the air all right so that that we might show a piece of it but but i probably won't let me scroll over cylinder head this is going to be an important one to use this is an odd looking head an odd looking uh valve isn't it kind of beautiful flush but take note of the valves are, are they apparently are almost touching. Well, let's say they don't touch. Right here. Right here is dead gas. Say it's a top dead center right now when it, when it ignites and it starts going down. Of course, it doesn't ignite there. Um, but that air, see that this air in here is my issue. It never, it's never going to leave properly. A lot of it's going to be getting recycled back into the next um, intake stroke. And let me show you. Let me show you. Interesting um, where this has led me or where I, I want it to lead me and my research has led me is that this guy, this uh, headers versus manifolds, 
supports my statement about horsepower loss. He did nothing with the engine. All he did was change out the uh, headers and manifold. The loss is looking at my notes is um, with the headers, you got 452 horsepower without head, without with the manifold design. Um, it's down to, I'm sorry, that was the ring one. That was the ring. Um, manifold uh, headers, 561, 561 horsepower, the best deal. The best deal when you, uh, I'm correction. This is the manifold. The best deal on this, 522 horsepower. If you take these off and put headers on, you're at 561. So the only thing is different is the uh, your exhaust. And that's what's very important here. Now, I know you might have seen videos where that one guy did it, and I'm going to, have to send this over to this engineer. I really enjoy watching. Um, um, a machinist and um, a car, uh, he does heads and all that. And maybe he's down there, you know, YouTube likes to link you to people you might have seen and I don't see him here but I'm going to send him a video and this guy too is interesting it's about porting and things like that right so the theory is that and they showed it in the horsepower test and they slapped they bent the hell out of a uh, exhaust system with the sledgehammer and the horsepower didn't even wasn't even bothered it was bothered by maybe two two uh two horsepower which isn't a re margin of error with just uh running a horsepower test of the engine all right, so they slammed the hell out of the exhaust pipes. Maybe you guys saw that one. Here's the issue I have is where you the combustion chamber, if you want to likes to measure this and tell you how much it is, et cetera. If you guys, there anybody, well, if you're watching this, you probably are game for, for being trolled at this point, maybe. I know you got conclusive files, and I'm going to go totally against that. Um, so when this exhaust valve opens, it's allowing the gases to come out. When the, uh, when the, uh, the exhaust stroke, the piss cylinder is coming up. It's forcing the gases out. It, at, no, at no point does it ever fill this void in, right? We know this because it comes up short. It can't hit the top of this. At no point will it ever fill this void in. At some point, this valve closed. Then you have your, your lag time across your lobe. At reversing directions, it starts coming down. This get the intake valve, well, I don't know if that's the intake or, or not, but let's just say that's the intake because it's larger to, to me. The intake is larger to me, but it's probably the opposite. Intake valve opens and starts sucking in air from, well, the intake, which comes all the way, as we know, from your filtered system coming in, you know, typically from your, your air filter, right? From that source all the way to here. The cylinder is pulling down. Uh, the piston rings are now acting like a vacuum of a of a of a of a. It's acting like a vacuum in the seal there, right? It's pulling air in also as this opens. You would think the atmospheric pressure would uh, would help out here, but I don't see out atmospheric pressure at where we are sea level, 14 degrees, crushing any of this. If I pull a vacuum on it, or well, if I put that close that off and pull the vacuum on it, it's not crushing. So the atmospheric pressure is working its way from the tube, your intake, right? to fill this void. The suction, the pulling down of this piston, if it's got a nice seal, will create a suction effect also in there. Now this is just one, right? Of course we got eight of them here that we're talking about in this, in this diagram that I'm working on. And it, it jumps from one side of the engine to the other, which is cool. That, that gives it a little bit of lag time, but the timing between all of them are, are so short between this firing again, that it, it's, it's almost insignificant. Of course timing is very significant, but it's insignificant for what I'm saying. So what happens was this pulling down, and if these were first closed and it's pulling down, what is it recycling? It just had an explosion in here when it when it had your uh, when it just had the com um, the uh, combustion take place, right? After compression, compressed the air, the spark fired, explosion took place. It's forcing the uh, rest of the energy is going to force the piston piston down. That exploded air, I can't find any research on that exploded air. Of course, we know it's dangerous. It kills you in the end, in the end game, out your exhaust pipe. All right, so but but I'd have to divide it by eight. I would need a single cylinder, single, single cylinder engine to find this under. I can't find studies under a single cylinder engine showing me what it puts out, the exact um, O2 that it puts out. Let's just Let's just give you more data before we start slamming you for a second. So let's use the intake. So we have air, of course, you know, CO2. Um, we know we have the, the air that's coming in from outside. Which one, Matt? Um, 
it's compressed air. Compressed air makes a huge difference. But we still have air, nevertheless. We, we're working with the same percentage of oxygen um, inside this air. That has not changed. And I have my notes handy for you guys. Um, give me a second. So that's not changed. And where are we here? Let me scroll down this last tab for a second. So here's a guy who's sort of crazy like me and thinking on these lines. And it's a space ref, right? Space uh, reference. Uh, it's, it's NASA type products. So what do I find? I find this guy has in 2001 has, has gone down this craziness that I've gone down to call compression, compression, combustion under pressure. That's part of my um, determination. And what happens is that everyone extrapolates, as we know. In, in engineering, it's all extrapolations. Nobody's doing real, real work on this. No one is. You think it's done, right? Because it's a combustion engine, everyone did the work. That's not true. That's sort of like the digital cameras you see now, still working on the, on the 35 millimeter format. The engineers, unless you're an inventor, you're not going to cross the line. You're just going to keep working on the same thing. Who's going to fund you anyway? Fund you, right? So this guy is trying to work out, try, first he has to prove that there's a difference of air igniting under uh, combustion than a just typical sea level. What he was able to discover, as you look at these shots here, and I'll give it to you, is that at one atmosphere, these are ATMs, atmosphere, um, the explosion looks sort of like that. The more you create the higher atmosphere, the more erratic the explosion is, uncontrollable, not reproducible. You know, it's going to happen, but, you know, you're going to get this chaos going on. and then. Uh, you guys seen pistons that have failed, and um, they tell you everything from timing to uh, your fuel injection pressure could be off, um, uh, things like that. In reality, it's uh, it's it's what it is. You know, you have to take apart that piece of metal to determine where its failure is. I'm not going to bore you with this guy's thing, but I want to give you a, put that inside your head for a second about it matters. Compression matters, right? So let's and we know that, but I'm saying it matters even more. Your spark plug, all this ratio stuff is usually worked out on, on the far end with someone like, let's go to someone like, well, not this guy. It would be someone like this guy who used a, a dyno, right? A, dy uh, a horsepower testing machine for engines. I find all these horsepower testing guys data for me, so I love that they're doing it. We have anybody? Nope. So I love that they're doing it. Um, so no one's. I love they're doing it. Let's talk about, and it's going to work out, how he's increasing horse pressure as he's, they level the deck. You have a top dead center. We know about that. But then you have to try and find the true top dead center because there's a dwell time and, well, and you've got the extra amount of cylinder on here to increase pressure. This guy, um, increase horsepower, they deck it. Listen to what he says, just a moment of it. Oops, sorry the block for performance in this case we had to do it because our customers looking for 400 horsepower out of this he wants 400 horsepower out of this he says his customer now I watch this whole thing let's let's go let's go again and back it up just a hair more we zero take the block for performance in this case we had to do it because our customers looking for 400 horsepower out of this little 350 Oldsmobile so we bought new pistons and we take the block and they run deck the block this thing is like as high as it can go. So it's going to create the most compression. Therefore, when, there, when an explosion happens, it would, um, it doesn't have, it, it created the most compression. So you're going to get more power out of it. Um, not, not just theoretically, you should, except for you got all the dynamics you'd have to worry about. And here we go. Back down to zero, like you see here. Before it was for example, that lip. I mean, let's, while we're here, let's just do that. That explosion, if, it, if, if it's chaos, right? If this is, Chaos, the explosion. In this case, we had to do it because our customers were looking for 400 horsepower out of this little 350 Oldsmobile. So we bought new pistons and we take the block. So if the explosion inside his head is chaos, that is, it's not directional. It's boom, it's blowing out and it's going out and everywhere, being controlled, redirected, if you will. But if it's being re redirected, wouldn't of these lips help run it if it's higher than there if the explosion is equal everywhere if it's equal everywhere the explosion we can't determine that because we don't have a visual on this we only have theoretical so you you, you have theoretical with how the explosion is happening 
Um, and part of the theory, theory is when you get to crack pistons and chips out is that you know, basically, uh, I can't say arced out because we're not sure, but explosions happened here and here and at the spark plug also, right? The, the air ignited. With that said, if this if the forces are going everywhere around the wall, wouldn't this lip drive this piston to one side? Would it not have a choice? It's a gas, right? You, you think it would explode everywhere. This is not a liquid in that format. This thing has got, you know, it's showing to be erratic in its explosion. So this profile on top of the cylinder surely counts. And let's go from there. All of it, all of it counts inside there. Should be more directional. The inside of a cylinder head should be more, more. Uh, you know, this this uh, part of my video says. Um, my title was to say. Um, um, let me look at a piece of paper instead of going back to it. Uh, do, 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 do. Right. That's what I wrote it. Um, well, porting, right? Porting is porting needs to be even more than what they're doing it. The cylinder walls, this is break, perfect porting, right? Perfect porting. All the, anything happening there at this point at the cylinder here is being redirected. You, if you could close this off and force the air, air in there and it could come out somehow, it would follow these walls. It would follow these surfaces. Of course, the rings would act as a little turbulence as it comes down there and tries a, an area to try to come back up. Um, but we have lubricant on. We got, you know, if you had lubricant on there. <sighs> back to this. So you can see how he's creating more horsepower by decking, flattening us out. Creating more compression before the ignition. And they brought it back down to zero, like you see here. Before it was 24,000 below the deck. So we decked about 24,000 24, is what they is what they were going after. Um, times, well, this is eight cylinder times all this area. So it, it does matter, but let's go. 24,000 to bring it top that center, exactly even for maximum power. All right. So then we grab the next one of his videos. Um, so again, we can see that's pretty, pretty, pretty clear. Except for, again, th th this is this is contrary. What you're looking at is contrary. This design is contrary to logic, and this is where I might start getting you guys pissing anybody off coming in to look. Well, if there, if it's an explosion in here and the forces are pushing down at this point, um, why this? Would it would this create a backwards force, a force pushing back up at that point? It's because it's counter. Remember, uh, you know, everything has an equal reaction, if you will. It's going to balance it, balance itself one way or another. Or with this force, if I if if an explosion was say at this time at this point, this force just would it is driving down. But this lip is a wall inside a wall. It's creating, I think, a side torque action. But your rings are designed not to to have the same clearance all the way around. There is no design where it says. Um, excuse me, um, where it says, uh, hey, um, um, there's going to be force here, so let's go ahead and do, uh, let's reshape these rigs in like an egg shape. Now, proof of what I'm saying is that these walls frequently have to be rehoned, uh, re re reboard. And that's because I think the shape of the pistons are making that wear, that irregular wear, uh, when you have a piston like this. The explosion is 100% non-controllable. You can make it happen, but you can't control its forces. The correction. If you knew how the forces were being um, manipulated, then you could work with it on this piston head. So in other words, we still have to deal with, with so that's a, that's a dynamic. Now let's go to the piston head again. That CO2 stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about the CO2 and recycling, recycling shit air to try to explode it again. You can't do it. We can't create that temperature. Uh, this, the explosion taking place inside here, I'll get us a better shot of it. Uh, I'll wait a moment. An explosion taken inside of here has multiple angles and shapes it's got to resolve itself around. Now we can see the carbon build up clearly on the on this surface and coming around the sides mostly unless they use a, uh, I forget what they call it, they shoot the gas across the back of there. Um, I'm not into that right. I mean, I'm into it, but we're not going to cross the line on that. Let's go to here. So the explosion is taking place. If this is sitting on top of what you just saw, it's taking place in this irregular, irregular shape. The round piston goes around this like this. The explosion takes place with these peaks and valleys in there, with this half moon or whatever we, whatever you like to describe this now. It's taking place in there. This is acting as a counterforce to your own explosion, I'm saying. If we use a shape charge, you know, it goes one direction when you're trying to, you know, militarily-wise, you're trying to blow up something, use a shape charge. 
You can control the direction of the explosion. I'm saying that this is totally chaos. There is no, you, you know the explosion is going to happen, and I'm saying they're not redirecting properly. This is as simple as that. This is where they're making problems. So all this porting and refining and trying to get rid of gases and all, yeah, that's nice. But you need to change this out. So we go to a dragster. Let me show you um, a dragster engine. And let's look at their pistons. Now, they count there as disposable. Oh, and I'm going to get to this, too. This is going to be about, we have a valve stem. You move the valve stem out of the way for the exhaust gases, and it's going to be the aerodynamics of, of air. And this will show you the back pressure and things like that. Basically, I guess to cut to the chase, we need to evacuate the air out of there when it comes back up. It's pushing up. It can't. Before the valve closes, that air that's inside there also needs to become under a vacuum somehow to start evacuating. And or you need to let the uh, intake valve open for just that little bit while it's having its evacuation so it can pull out the burnt fuel, the shit fuel, the, the carbon monoxide, the stuff that won't explode again. You're not going to create it, to, um, you know, and um, looking at all the temperatures that's happening inside the cylinder, you're not going to get carbon monoxide to explode again, to ignite again. Carbon monoxide is reported to explode again have an ignition point, in other words. Find your ignition point. Your carbon monoxide ignition point is going to be 1,128 degrees Fahrenheit. You're not getting that again. So you're recycling that same part in that head, that, that big old clearance up there if you want, that everybody seems to, some people want, some people don't want to, well, that part of the, 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 uh, the combustion chamber, you are, recycling because not was when because at the explosion the uh, valve opens you've got a suction coming in and that suction is going to want to push some of that carbon mon carbon monoxide i'm sorry you're going to have your uh your uh ex you're going to have your um your exhaust first with the uh intake valve closed so your exhaust is going to come up it's going to uh, i mean your, your compression your exhaust stroke is going to come up Keeping the uh, opening the um, or keeping it open the, uh, the exhaust valve, trying to force out the air. It can't do it all, not without a vacuum at that point. And that's what I'm saying. You need a vacuum on the on the exhaust on the exhaust side, literal fan, um, or a um, the, the intake valve needs to open at some point, some timing where you can see the transfer has taken place. There is nothing that I could find that shows um, how that transfer can take place. Closest thing I came was a 1940s guys when he did the uh, turbo injection. He was recycling the exhaust air um, using a turbo. Using a turbo to exhaust air, use the exhaust air, that could theoretically, in my theory, could, could create a, a suction, the vacuum, if you will, to help pull out this air. But remember, you can't create a vacuum. You're going to need incoming air. Because you're not you're just not going to be you're just not going to be able to get a vacuum in that cylinder. It's, it's you know it's not possible under that short time period, that stroking period. And speaking of that, so I have to give you the stroke period that all this has to take place in. I like this guy's blog. And this one is valve seat angle and airflow by Grumpy's performance. So Grumpy here has put this out in the public eye for us. And it dealt with valve seat. You know, we deal with uh, the valve seat being very important. Um, and he's, he has it down to this. that. But keep in mind that even at only 1,000 RPMs, those valves are going through repetitive cycling from fully seated to fully open and back to fully seated 8.3 times per second. So 8.3 times per second is what he's stating is going on with, good, with his good math. And at 7,000 RPMs, 50 times per second. So time of valve remains at any specific lift is very minimal. And that's what I'm saying, too, that even though you've got the compression stroke, uh, the com exhaust stroke, you know, under compression coming up the cylinder trying to push out. And I'm sorry, it's not under compression. Uh, it's 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 the valve is open. It's just pushing up at that point. And it has no it has nothing. There's nothing else to, to help it on the other side. The exposure to the outside air at this point is only from any any leaks you may have. And also the exhaust pipe. That's the exposure to the uh, cylinder at that point. There is no intake air coming in. It's only it's only value or exposure time is 
is from the exhaust pipe. That's going to come back. I'm going to wrap it all up. I'm going to wrap it all around. That will come back to his testing on this one. Um, nope. Under the exhaust pipes. And this is why, and this guy's been testing for years, 30 something years, and he was blown away by the results on his own test. And I've seen that with another guy, and I've seen the wrong data on another one, um, that they misunderstood what they were looking at. This matters strictly. I mean, it, it really matters. This, uh, this, uh, this length of pipe, your restrictions, et cetera. So even though he did this test and he, well, we know we'd have some exhaust pipe, but, but he, it's an unfair test because it didn't, it, it did this. It transferred to his exhaust system and not an exhaust system that would have been typical. So it, it's not fair, but I don't know about this system. It's so old. But what I'm going to show you is that some of the, see, imagine this exhaust coming out of this one, this one, and this one, and this one. It's going so fast, as you just saw, this, as this guy states, um, and his data, you know, and I won't argue against his data. I don't want to even track it down. But let's just count his data, grumpy guy's data, legit. 8.3 times per second, as much as 58 times a second um, that you're getting that, that blowout coming out of exhaust pipe. And let's do this. So visualize. That's airflow. Um, visualize. I need that tailpipe again. Visualize this 58 times a second, but wait a minute, that's 58. Oh, wait a minute, that one is two, and that one. And we only have to worry about it on one side, not the other side, because they're not connected, right? So 58 times a second. Is this also 58 times a second with a break? 58 times a second with a break? 58 times a second. Grumpy, I didn't read all the stuff, but let's say it is. All of that, all, of, all that air pressure, if you can figure out what's left after the explosion, because I, I could not. The energy is not, it's not, I can't find out what happens to that, that volume of uh, air as far as what, once the explosion happens, how much of it is gone. And so we know, because no one's given on the outside, no one's capturing it and saying what's on the outside. So we know it's coming out as carbon, you know, no longer O2. So we'd have to figure out how much air is being compressed, how, you know, when it's compressed and it ignites, we, uh, we lost all this oxygen. With that said, um, we can remove the oxygen from the air and figure out the mass. What I'm gonna show you is why is that so important? The turbulence is why it's so important. Turbulence, this. But 10 like this is, that pipe's got, th this is about porting and everything. All of this stuff creates turbulence. You ever seen an airplane with all that shit on the outside of the wings, all the, all the, all the sticking up bolts and all? No, you don't. It's all about keeping that turbulence down. Um, and yes, you're creating turbulence in your exhaust, which everyone seems to call back pressure. Now, um, that back pressure, I would I would say results is really something that your your loss of your loss of hold on, let me pull it over. Great, great. Sorry about that. The loss of your engine power, as we're gonna we'll go through this little sample here as a video, is that all of this air is coming right here. It's locking in, it's bound, it's just like driving four-way lane highway coming to one. One, two, three, four lane highway getting backed up. Now, if you, all, depending on how complicated your exhaust system is, you could be backing it up again. So that creates a double backup, if you will, as it's running. Your backup changes under RPM. Think about it, the torque related to horsepower, RPM related stuff. Um, and it's creating more turbulence, more back pressure. And at one point, it, it's even though you can go higher in RPMs, you get no further increase in power. Um, and of course, low in there. But at one point, you get no further increases. It's, it's diminishing losses. Coming back to the turbulence deal. So all of these guys come. This one creates a different turbulence in this one, and th this one experiences turbulence from this one and this one as it tries to go through. I'm sorry, it would be this one experienced the turbulence from all three of these, and then um, this one's experienced the turbulence from these two in front. Oh wait a minute, but this is coming behind it. Is this going to act as a, as a, a blowing action? A suction action and, app, and actually help this one have more power. Now you see where I'm going with this, that you need to test each cylinder to figure out what the power of each one. They test the whole engine. You need to test what the power of each one is doing to determine how much it's being affected by the other three on this side. On this side, how much is it being done? All right, now let's go ahead and show you again. So visualize all of these coming out, creating a, a dam, all four of them. 
creating a turbulence problem right here. It's having an issue. Sometimes if you engineer this properly by mistake, um, I would say by mistake because I haven't found any engineering on it, that uh, you can actually create a suction effect. Remember the only way that, that on this side, the atmospheric pressure is not crushing these pipes. Yeah, this is greater than that. So there is no external air coming in. In fact, they liked it sealed off. Or, but nobody likes to hear that little that little tack, that tack, 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 tack thing, you know, the noise. All right, so it's sealed off all the way through there. It's got a negative, it's got a pressure going out to the atmosphere, not coming in. Um, so now we have this long pipe that it's got to go through. All things being considered, I don't know how he's, uh, what's going on here. But imagine if I had a fan here, just an inline fan, a suction fan. Every time one of these opened up, this was this created a positive suction, a vacuum, if you will, but it's not a vacuum. It's, a, it's just flowing, constantly creating a suction. Yeah, I got to say suction. And every time this opens up um, the, and it, the piston's pushing up, that inline um, 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 fan would be clearing out the top of that cylinder. You have to allow the intake to open just a hair, though, at some point. Just a little hair to make sure you clear out the rest of the exhaust gases, the carbon monoxide. Then it can close up. This continues running. You're, it's being dealt with on a, on, a, on a cylinder basis, as you know, all the time, 24-7 down here. All right, so we go to, to, to help this work out in theory. Um, drag racers, they don't use, drag racing cars don't use, so my theory says drag racing cars uh, would have more, would, wouldn't use you know, a friggin' exhaust pipe. They want clear, clear um, tubes. And it turns out, um, so I lost the, uh, I lost the link, but maybe I have it in there, I don't know. But let's just drag racing cylinder heads, so images. None of these are, no, 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 no. no. I need a real deal. I found the guy. It was it, it's they're bigger than that. There's two of them. They're they're huge. Um, great. That's just a regular car. I'm talking about the real deal. A real drag racing car head. And that that might be yeah. So let's just do this. Let me just do um. Oh, that was weird. So drag racing cars. Let's just take it and we go to images. I'm just trying to get a close up on exhaust. That would have been nice. Oh. Let's just grab that one. So you can see each cylinder has its own exhaust. Uh, this looks like a car job, but they'll actually use the uh, turn in the pipes down even to try try to help uh, do some things. Each cylinder has its own exhaust. There is no turbulence experience when they're trying to merge to become one, which we do in automobile regular cars. None experience, none experienced there. This of course is just pure noise, right? Pure noise. Um, there's three into one, there's three into one rather that uh, will have turbulence. But you could design it where if you get this timing right, that the air from this one and then, the, you know, I recycle it, that you can figure out the cycle of the air. You can act, it, you can, it can act like a fan. It can act like a compounding fan is what I'm saying. Use the cycle of the compression of the engine. Maybe you got to change the, uh, which pistons are firing to help with this. Maybe you got to make a three and a one and then a three and a one and, and then a single, you know, to figure out how to do it. If you're going to do it without my fan action. Um, here again, here's a single, here are singles. This allows the full, the full escape of the, uh, with no turbulence issues happening. This is just one to one. So you could actually um, test it on out, outside of one, each one of these as the one cylinder car I mentioned to you. Here's an access to it. If you wanted to check, if you can capture the, uh, capture the pollutants out of this one two that's what you would if you can only capture the pollutants out of this you would know what's going on and capture what's going in you could take what's going in what's coming out and try to do some math on that all right that's just a kind of a quick basic one on that one now that's showing you 
your compression. Did anybody say anything? Let me see. Anybody say anything over here? Because I'll jump back here and if you, if you said something and fill you in if I lost you at all yet. What I'm going to show you is porting. Porting. That porting matters. All turbulence matters. So all turbulence matters. But you can make it work for you. Like a vacuum is what I'm saying. Like a vac. To remove um, the, the, the um, you know, what do we have it? The uh, depleted oxygen, the depleted. Can't be depleted because it, it, it's depleted. Uh, Completed mass of, I can't even call it mass of um, waste. I mean, you know, exhaust gas. And that's where I leave, leave it with that one. So this is what I'm basically trying to show is that the head design is wrong and what's really matters. So let's, let's just jump into, let me give you some supporting data on my statements first. So let's jump into the guy's video. I'm allowed to use it under fair use with just a section of it. Under under narrative, 426 Hemi, if you guys want to find him. And let's go to two tests they're going to run. So one's going to be the headers, and one's going to be – I guess they just jumped right into it. All right, let's just do that. Let me turn it up. Yeah, we're going to experiment with something here today. We've got a 472 cubic inch Hemi, which is uh, stoked out from uh, 426. What we got here is I want to run the engine with headers versus exhaust manifolds. That's it. Headers versus exhaust manifold. That's what he's doing here. He's going to be surprised about the horsepower change. Proving my theory that the only thing that changed in that, because he ran them back to back. He took them off, stripped them out, put them over. Only thing that changed was from the exhaust side of the engine outwards. I gotta count everything from here outwards because you can see there's a tailpipe here. Eh, pipe extension, whatever you want to call it. But over here we have a we have a four into one and we have the tube right there. You know, I, I don't know if this is vacuumed. Um, that would be interesting. I don't know. But this is gonna get you more horsepower. Could he have created a suction effect here and get the same horsepower? I, I don't know because I don't know where this turbulence is going on. Clearly, there's a, a freaking weird multiple change of directions here that you'd have to calculate for. If we know that this is cast material, we know it's a rough finish inside. That creates turbulence, period. There is no choice. It creates turbulence. And that's what they a lot of people refer to as back pressure. Um, turbulence is what's really going on. The back pressure, I would say, doesn't exist because, well, well, there, theoretically it does. Let me show you one more thing on here. If this cylinder is closed, right, it's now taking on, I'm sorry, the exhaust valve is closed. It now has the um, intake valve open. It's pulling down and sucking in air. While it's doing that, these, these, one of these guys experienced one or maybe even three. I don't know how this, the timing of this engine before this one cycled again. So, I mean, all three, yeah, all three would have, wouldn't they? This one would come before, right? It doesn't double down. Yeah, so all three of these experienced an explosion and removing of gases. Now, each one of these are gonna be in a cycle at that point. If this is experiencing an explosion, gases are coming out, these three better have their valves, their, uh, their, their, their um, exhaust valves closed because as this pressure is coming down, it's also, this is not empty. It's going to want to force air backwards also into each one of these because it's pressure, right? It's trying to, it, when, that, when this is on, when this one now is on the uh, exhaust stage, it's pushing that shit out of there. And it's only a little bit right then, but it all stacks up when you have the engine running for a few minutes. The pipe is solid. You go, you don't believe it's solid. Go sit in the, go suck up the end of the gas pipe, the exhaust pipe. And you'll feel it. Of course, it'd be nice little putter and as you increase the RPMs, you're going to get even more of that in your face. But that's a back pressure, all uh, back volume of it, right? So these three have to be closed, or that will experience will come backwards into here. 
consequently, when this opens, this exhaust valve opens, it's also going to have that air in there. It's not just one coming down this one side. It's sharing it with three, three other, three others have already contaminated this line, creating a, a, a pressure in there. Now, what's going to happen is the, uh, this is heat, heat, 1100 degrees or something like, you know, it's carbon monoxide we're talking. Now I'm talking, we're talking for, shit. Let me grab it for you. The heat. So we have to realize we're dealing with heated air at this point and not just regular O2. We're dealing with heated carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide, I said. Okay. So heated. At one atmosphere again, the gas deposits directly to a solid. So you would need 109.3 degrees to ignite this carbon dioxide. You need a negative negative temperature tonight to ignite again at that point at one atmosphere. I also showed you ignition point the other way around. Where the hell is it? Um, where are you? My eyes are glazed over again, so if I'm... Uh, if I'm reading something that's not there, you got to comment on it. Because a lot of it, I may look like I'm reading them. I'm actually working from my memory. Uh, hydrogen bonds in water. Uh, of course, we've got some hydrogen problems. Um, the oxygen is no longer present. I wanted to also know if you can recycle it to uh, use it as how, how you can recycle it to use it as, a, uh, as part of the combustion chamber in the combustion section again. Um, no, you don't need to see that. That's going to take us too far down the line. So on the carbon monoxide side, 1,128 degrees Fahrenheit is its ignition point. It's it's hot. It is hot. What is the temperature is what I'm trying to show you, the temperature of. So I don't know the temperature of this, ex this exhausted gas at the point of the engine. It changes by the time it gets to the tailpipe. I do not know because it's under, it's under pressure. It's going to give off a different temperature, even though we have – we know they cool it with, with your antifreeze, right? We know that, and the oil also. Uh, the ignition temperature is 495 degrees when we're going to um, flash point this thing at one atmosphere, and we're talking about oxygen. That's the flash point of commonly known flammable liquid is gasoline. It has a flash point of I'm sorry, I'm just thinking, uh, I'm, I'm, diesel fuel crashed, crashed into my mind. Sorry about that. The ignition temperature is about 495 degrees Fahrenheit. The ignition temperature is 490. This is our spark making that ignition, right? Our ignition, but we don't know the pressure, and we don't know that because it's based also on each engine's compression, right? Each one's going to have a different cylinder, is going to have a different effect on the whole deal. Which would also explain why you have one cam, one of your cam, um, your cam, um, help me out, the cam journals affecting, messing up over the other one. One's got more pressure, one doesn't, you know, based on compression in the engine, which then with that same explosion taking place all the time, creates a different force on that part of the cam than the other part of the cam. All of this stuff is pretty evident when you look at cams and how they're failing. You're telling me the guy designed a cam. The one of the lobes on the cam shitty and the other one not. That's what a lot of people like to say when you look at machine shots going, this failed. In reality, I think it's a it's an explosion failure. More pressure at a one cylinder over the other based on it being able to create more compression and explosion being erratic. Explosions being uh, non-controllable. You can just make them happen. All right, so this should be something else. I, I think I do not want to go down and try to explain to you about the uh, the transfer of heats. This would be very important for the cylinders, for the rings, for uh, you know the spark plug even participating. So we have we have the compression test. Let's go to it. I mean the engine test. And there's your, I mean this is indicating what's going on here. I well, might have cleaned it, but this this is clearly a pattern of how. The redirect, uh, no, that looks new, doesn't it? It's, this is complete. I think the sample's completed. I need another one. I need another sample. I, I can't see that being that clean. Let's go to the engine the engine test. And this is also dealing with whether you're going to, you should tap your, um, your, your, uh, your valve stems and all that, whether you should, uh, how you should address them.
if you should address them, what do you think about it? I'm saying you got so much shit air in there anyway that this is par for the course. That, yeah, everything counts. They use multiple degrees, but they use no data behind it. Airflow um, is what they're saying. It creates a better airflow, um, but the airflow um, data is not. I think it's. I think it's wrong. I think it's wrong. If if uh, if airflow over this over this piston worked good at, let me see. We have um, them marking it at 60, 45, and thirty. I don't have my notes on me, but we will hit that. They hit it. They hit it at multiple seat angles: 65, 30, and forty-five degrees that they think it's all about getting over this valve well i'm saying it's not all about getting over that valve and this shit fouls up so fast and why does it foul up on the back side if it's seating why is it fouling up on the back side all the way up to here what is it that carbon how's it how's it doing that we would like to say it's the pattern is exhaust gas going out coming across there we got a whole lot of things that uh, we could say on that right Let's come back to this guy's test. And that's going to be important too, because this is the, is, is, I'm using it as a round pipe. It's a foil wing, but it also creates a turbulence around your, around your piston, your uh, piston rod, your shaft, that perhaps this needs to be made more aerodynamic as air comes around it, creating a suction or they, they need to change this. So it's more, it creates more by default, aerodynamic suction a negative a negative effect on this side will have a creating of a pulling effect on this side um negative pressures you know you you gotta you gotta get down to that level and let's go to that's the airfoil see the negative effect is going to create a, a, a lifting effect over there i'm saying you're creating the same thing inside here with that heat that you have the heat work it out work it out and let's go to the engine test So what we're going to do is we're going to start the engine with a two and one eighth inch header and do some tests to see. Vacuum scavenging. All right. Somebody, uh, somebody's on board. Hey, um, Luna. So vacuum scavenging is exactly what a lot of people refer to. Uh, what, are you, what are you referring to there? And, and nobody's, and the, but everyone's just saying port, just port up there. And that's about it. I'm showing that, uh, Luna, that it's all the way back down to here. And it's creating a turbulence and the the back and, and and an issue, and the scavenging is even worse. That you're leaving behind since you just popped in lunar. I'm saying this. Um, everything coming. Hot temp minus cold temp divided by hot temp. Um, we can play with that in a second. Um, lunar, look. I'm saying this, Luna. If we look at this piston head, that this is still left behind. Uh, obviously, this is I don't know if that's in the right position but uh, don't pay attention to that graph yet someone else is working on it that this is left behind luna we got a round we have a round piston pushing up the round piston pushing up creating and this creating this compartment with this profile so it's half round half this if you know anything about you know shape charges and things like that they, they literally you can literally control the direction of an explosion this i'm saying it's creating a screwed up direction it, it's it, it's missing the math that we're still using this design from, you know, 19 whatever, but we're not using our current technology. Even in the dragsters, I saw that they were, they're still using uh, something a little odd. Is this push up, push up, push, as this pushes up, right, Luna? We have the exhaust valve and it only goes so far. It travels, in this case, the top of the deck bed on this, on this guy's thing. It's like, like right underneath there. That still leaves this volume of air, of not air anymore. It's just combusted material, right? Of a, uh, of exhaust gases of the uh the oh what happened there of the uh yeah let's see if it comes back i said come back okay um i don't know what i hit i'm gonna leave that there because i gotta figure it out um so it's leaving behind that that there luna as this then closes, the exhaust um, valve closes, the uh, intake valve opens. At that point, when it opens, all this crap air is mixed with the other air that's coming in. This piston is pulling downwards, creating some type of vacuum, a little suction, if you will, before it closes off. 
it now brought back this shit air, this compressed, tight shit air that is now going to involve and explode again. It's going to now involve, it's polluted. It's polluted and diluted this beautiful air it had. Um, and it, I'm saying it cannot, that that will not explode again because the carbon, carbon won't explode again because of, hold on, I saw your comment pop up. Give me a second. Because our ignition temperature of carbon monoxide is 1,128 degrees Fahrenheit. So that that cannot explode again. Thanks, Linda. One out. So that cannot explode again. But yet, that same volume that everybody's so happy with the combustion chamber, we call it, right? Combustion chamber. I'm saying that volume is now shit that you've screwed yourself. Unless, Luna, unless you can get this, unless you can control. Hey, Scott. Happy relationship. That's right, Scott. Unless you can control, um, and I'm saying control it through a vacuum, through uh, um, um, Scott and Luna, you guys just popped in. I'm saying control it. Let me get you this thing then. Let me get you what I'm saying control it by. Control it by creating a vacuum and the exhaust pipe. And, well, that's uh, the government's high energy thing. I was trying to show transfer, but you guys already know about transfer heat. I don't have to go that low into it. And here, too, literally how the atoms change. I was going to go that level of saying, what are we dealing with? What are we dealing with? We need to know what atoms are we dealing with? What's inside there? Because possibly maybe we can recycle it and make it explode again on like a one-two punch. You know, something crazy. I'm thinking off the top of my head. Imagine this. Imagine if you had another spark plug inside there that would fire on a different rate, but could fire at 1,123 degrees Fahrenheit. It could, it could create that temperature. So you would have every other compression stroke, every other explosion. Is that right? Yeah, because it would burn off full. That would be like a full burn off. Ah, hell if I know. Uh, it's just something crazy I was thinking of. That, that doesn't work out when you finally do the math, I think. Um, also, this Luna and, and Scott, since you guys are so 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 smart, look. If it's think of shape charge again, a shape charge will blow in one direction. If we have an explosion here, the shape charge is this. Uh, the shape is the uh, the direction of the charge is the shape of this piston walls forcing down. We know the piston head. Why the hell did they create a piston head with this shape? Why the hell? If an explosion is happening up in that little section there. This is also part of a, a, the uh, everything has an equal reaction. So imagine if the explosion is happening inside this, this that small confined area up there. The explosion happens. It's going to grab this lip. When it grabs the lip, what happens? It's a ricochet. If you guys know anything about explosions and military type stuff, a ricochet can kill you. You stand in front of the wall. The thing can go off the wall, come back, and you got killed by the damn you know, just the forces, just the air around it, the, the, the uh, expansion of air. So I'm saying that this is, is silliness, you know, that maybe it's uh, for them to start the, the pressure going downwards, but that's still silliness. Uh, it's a bad design. You need to maybe not bring it up the top dead center and have it explode before then and use the walls already. So have a smooth face. And because now as it's going down, as you did that, forces are going back towards the valve. With a spark plug also, but that's not the direction we want the forces to go. We don't want a reversal of our forces. We want the explosion to happen in the chamber and in that head, all and, and it goes in every direction is what we want it. With the exception of we we created a, an out for it, an OUT down this. If the forces are hit hit the top of this, the out is it must turn that crank, we'll push down on the piston rod, right arm, and then it forces the crank around, which we, how we get our energy. So we made it redirect. We redirected the forces in a downward way. Now, this is smooth. What are they saying? That, that um, it would blow through here, perhaps, and cause a leak, a leak in the cylinder head? Maybe, maybe they need to you know, make this better, you know, overlapping better or something. Maybe that's why that some people do that. But we know why. I mean, I know why, in my theory, why these piston walls get out of round. If the force was going straight down, they wouldn't get out of round. The force would be equal. If you've got an add around, which they often do, add around, then you've got forces forcing coming down here, that explosion hitting the backside of this. So starting here, let's work it from that side and do it down. It explodes. The forces hit against this wall here, pushing the ring, compre compre uh, compressing the ring to the wall. Down that side, I guess uh, you're going to have to deal with that in your own brain. Compressing it to the wall, redirecting it to start sliding down. I guess I'll jump to that one. 
but that lip also sent the forces back in that explosion, back towards the um, the valves, back towards the uh, spark plug, and also the head above. So it starts pushing it downwards, and that gives it that out of round, I think, because more forces are on the outside, obviously directed by the shape, the shape of this. Now they would tear off. Uh, you would obviously should see less wear wear in the front. Um, I don't think it's going to be a ricochet. In my theory, there's no ricochet. You know, like ding, 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 ding. I don't see that. I see it as one continuous force and driving motion down. I, I welcome your uh, anything you guys might see that I'm like, oh no, you're missing it. Um, now, if you make these perfectly round, would you do it? I think it does matter the head, right? The angle of the head under under its explosion. Remember, it's all I care about is one explosion, not all of these all together. Just focus on one explosion happen. And look at the back side of this head. You see what the counter, the counter face is, the counter of it. The counter of it is, let's grab it. I know you guys are probably commenting. The counter of it is, and remember, so we're talking about, you know, physics got to have a, a, an action, reaction. That's two of them. So the counter is this weird shape for one. I guess we could use that one. So one, look at this, look at the shape of this thing. Uh, dual valves and everything. I don't want to pollute our, pollute our conversation. Where the hell are you? So there's two valves, right? So um, the counter of it, here's that round piston around here, the round shape of the head, the block, and then the head sits on top of it. When you have this explosion in here, I'm saying all this it is screwing the game up. Now, I'm not the only nut job playing with this. Damn, Lunar, that's about right. What? Oh, look, I didn't know you were racing, Scott. What, way back when I was racing, they were looking into ecliptic um, exhaust to improve gas flow. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, Lunar, you're about right on that, aren't you? That's about the size of that. But these guys are machine. They, they should machine something differently if they want to be the horsepower yeah. experts, those two guys, that, that, that guy there. But so the explosion, it's a shape. It's a, it's a, it's a shape charge. Now, if we come over here to um, this guy flying over. Right, this is from NASA's site. This guy is working when I was trying to get data, 2001. He's one of the, I guess, their groundbreaker on, on um, explosions based on atmospheric pressure. And I'm saying pressure's changed. Inside there, it's no longer one atmosphere. It's obviously many more atmosphere. And what he's shown, though, under his with limited um, research, if you will, that this is that one atmosphere. So you'll like this, Scott and Luna. One atmosphere, this is basically what an explosion looks like. It's like a, how to describe it? A, um, um, he had some weird word for describing it. It's funny, his name is Law, because it's like I was looking up Gas's Law, and then the, this guy, uh, his name is Law. Um, I'll get right back to that. All right, so um, Law, Law and his research associates, um, Stephen, somebody in um, whatever, uh, devised an apparatus that would allow them to obtain images of the flame as it propagates while maintaining the chamber pressure constant at its initial value, which can be as high as 60 atmospheres. The apparatus compromises two, uh, comprises of two chambers, one inside the other, because that's how they were able to watch it, right? Uh, with alignment optical windows, a sleeve, a connector too, so you can see, you can visualize how they probably do that. The combustion gas is then immediately ignited by a centrally located spark. So centrally located, so they use, you know, our, our, our sparks are not centrally located. You know, the the, the, the heads are on one angle and the, and the blocks on another angle. Um, I'm sorry, the head and block, you know, they they're, they appear to be aligned, but you know the valves and all that are on, on the shape of the damn things in different angles, what I'm driving at. All right, so um, so here's at one atmosphere, and watch what it says. Um, the resulting uh, uh, spherical spherical flame propagates outward until it meets the boundary of the inert gas and is exhaust and is extinguished. So in the center, one atmosphere, bloom, bloom, pretty balanced, except for it looks. If this is his image, it looks like it it's not so balanced because that appears to be you know larger than the next. 
I can't find any more images on this. I didn't have to because it, it, this is only, I want to hit this only for a minute. Okay, so what, what happens is he increases the pressure, the atmosphere, and still use the same ignition point. Um, you can see what ha what happens here. We're at five. Uh, wait a minute. What do you do here? Wait a minute. And, and however, at even a moderately high pressure of five atmospheres, wrinkles develop over the flame surface. Wrinkles, inconsistent. This explosion, if you will, it's like a wave. And so you might like that wave because that, isn't that what you uh, you guys refer to? What you just told me, Luna, isn't that referred to as you guys use as a uh, um. Lunar, isn't that what you guys use for your, um, now I'm not a mechanic. I am not a mechanic. So you guys should step in there. Um, vacuum scavenging. All right. You guys call it the wave, uh, that wave. Um, yeah, 20 atmospheres. So, uh, what's this top in NHRA Draxers mechanics? Mechanics call directly the engineers at the motor company parts in one hour. Oh, okay, that's pretty badass. So now you've got this. What he, what you're showing is, is it's it's uh, not controllable. The explosion is not controllable. What is controllable is you can make it happen. You can make it happen. So imagine if you have a low compression engine now. So you'll like this lunar, and I think my man, my Scott, liked this too. So you got low compression engine. It creates less atmosphere, right? So le less atmosphere. Yeah, I heard about that. I did research in it. Le less atmosphere, so it creates less downward force on the crank on the current uh, on the um, on the uh, crankshaft. It's not doing its work all the way. Well, maybe one has got more compression. It's doing more work. So it, it, it harms the journal differently than the one that's doing less work um, and not so much gaps, but because the, uh, the shock is different than the, uh, than the others. One is a harder hit than the others, not being equal is what I'm saying, that part of your, also your, your journal is failing or, you know, the, uh, the, the issues down there because, the, because of the uh, compression translating under, un, after your explosion. After your explosion. So I guess give me for clarity. <laughs> I screwed that up a little bit. I screwed that up a lot. Cause I'm looking at my notes now, and, I, and that was supposed to have a line through it. That was a theory I was having. That sucked. No. Okay. Shit. Sorry about that. So look, it's actually opposite what I was going to say. So opposite of what I was saying is that the explosion is equal in all of them, even a bad cylinder with bad compression, right? What happens to the forces with the bad compression? Well, it's the rings we call it. So that those that that. That uh, that dead shit air, right? It's working its way around the cylinder, right? The compression, the rings are shut, shitty ass. It's working its way around and going what into the crankcase? Where's it going? Where's it going? Where where is where is that air going? Where's that where's that that shot of air? That's that explosive gas. Where is it going on the bad compression? It's hitting the outside walls, and you, you, some rings are there. It's not, and what I'm saying is it did not diminishing the explosion. The explosion did not diminish. The explosion is still the same. So say you got this one here, or 20, and my man said 20, 20 atmospheres. If the explosion is the same, the force on that cylinder, that, that explosion is taking place. Those, those gases have resolved themselves. And if the valves are closed, the forces still go down. Yeah, you tell I know that's me too. I, I don't warm my shit up sometimes. So it's going down. Where, where is it? Where the explosion? Where is that all of, that, that 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 poisonous gas, if you will, the carbon dioxide? The, 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 where are they going? They're going around the rings, down the side of the walls, and that's where we're going to get this little rubbing now, where they try to talk about what's it called? Hitting a skirt when skirting against the walls. Is that what they call it, Luna? And uh and um and uh my man up here, Scott, isn't that? skirting rubbing the skirt well i'm saying part of that explosion that got past those rings because of bad rings hits the outside of it, it you know the defaults hits the outside of the piston tries to make its way around if you will it cannot and as the piston's riding down it forces um itself to one side it pushes the skirt pushes the uh the uh, piston against the wall 
Um, ultimately, they start letting you, when you remove them. You see those locked up pistons. I've uh, got so much time in this evaluating all this stuff that you see the locked up piston uh, where it doesn't really flip and all. And they're like, well, you know, that's wear and tear. I'm saying it's the explosion that caused that wear and tear. The explosion didn't change. The explosion has to be resolved. It's it's going to resolve itself in the piston walls. No, I mean, sorry, ring chafing, ring rub. Yes, but lunars. So, so you see how I'm saying that ring rug happened? Not because of a worn bearing inside the, uh, the piston, um, the, the top of the piston that goes across your pin. Not that. That's what a lot of people like to say. That pin got worn out or something else. I, in theory, I'm saying if you can get the sleeve. Thank you. Uh, yeah, sleeve. Sleeve? Is that what the pins, the sleeve, the piston? Yeah, they, they do call it a sleeve, don't they, I think. Anyway, I'm saying if you got if you got that right, the forces have no choice but to resolve themselves to go down that sil the face of the cylinder and push it down, all of them the same equally, 100% equally, all the time. All the time, right? I got an exception. All the time. You got the same rings on there, your same clearances, your same cylinder face, then there should be no different in wear across the entire engine when i press the gas pedal they all except for the i guess if i let go of the gas pedal like within a split second you, no they're all going to experience the same amount of uh rpms you know they're all going to race up they're going to come well you know i guess not even in theory literally one's got to start faster than the others and the rest got to catch up right so so that would what mean what depending on where you press the gas pedal uh it would be random, so damn random on what, I, what I'm saying then. So you don't know where you, wherever you press the gas pedal, which which cylinder would experience the, ne the next highest RPM, right? The next increase, the next explosion, the highest explosion is what I'm driving at Lunar and, uh, and Scott. Because when we press on the gas pedal, we're, we're, we're saying to the next cylinder in line, you know, theoretically, next cylinder, no, literally, right? Next cylinder, hey, we want to take the RPMs way up. So it doesn't dump gas in all of them. It's only the one they're working on. So that one says you now get, so it's cylinder number, oh, this is perfect. This is eight cylinders. Like, no, there's 10. This 10 cylinder car here. You now say, this cylinder, guess what? All this one, we were doing 50 miles an hour. And we had to maintain a stream of fuel and explosions were all equal, right? Or, uh, you had a, you know, whatever you had on the damn your gas pedal. Then you hit the gas pedal real hard. You say to this cylinder, I want you to now, well, increase RPMs. I need my RPMs up. I'm going to add more fuel. So my explosion, I'm, I'm lost now. Hold on. I'm trying to un unlose myself. My brain's like chasing. My RPMs increased. Now I'm, I'm, taking, on t I'm taking on new data from the, the, uh, what we know when it maxes out. My brain's running around now. What it's sharing is at the, uh, so you know where I'm going. It's thinking about the damn um, dyno test. How they max out a certain RPM and they get no more value out of it. No more. But you get or more RPMs, but no more, no more speed, no more um, torque, no more horsepower. I'm sorry, you do get more speed, don't you? You get more RPMs. Oh, okay, Lunar. I, th I thought the drag state uh, dragsters use that single billet, right? That billet stuff. Dragsters still do, and they get that with three thousand horsepower, or something like three thousand. So we have the. Uh, I'm gonna. Is did the explosion increase? All you did was change the frequency. So the explosion is the same. Then remember, I'm not a mechanic. So correct me if I'm wrong. The explosion is the same. We just we just increase the frequency of the explosion when we hit the RPMs higher. So the explosion is the same. The frequency happens faster. And at some point, our maximum frequency is is reached, and we know that by horsepower and torque. And we go, you can't get any more, even though you increase the frequency higher. You're having more explosions. You went from seven thousand to 7,400 explosions or, you know, RPMs rather, or, and explosions increased more, but you get no more, you get no more end ass. You get no more torque out of the back end. We get no more power. All right. So, right. And at some point lunar, as we noted, at a certain RPM, you get no more though. The frequency, you, you get no more, you get nothing out of it. So what happens if we do, we got a compression, a, a cylinder over here that's putting out, 
it can do 82,000. Yeah, it's some crazy shit. I didn't, um, I did not know that until the dragster ones. Um, you know, about the crazy shit like 3,000 horsepower and all that. Um, so then we have, um, yeah, you know, when I'm looking at your comment. So then we have this one at 80. The compression loss came somehow, is what I'm saying. The rings are all equal, right? They're all equal. The cylinder head was equal. You know, everything was equal. How did you get a worn cylinder, a piston ring then? How did your piston ring get worn? You could say that, uh, you know, without, when you change oil all the time, so we're going to remove oil from the formula that it was clogged or anything else and nothing, no foreign debris. And, and no foreign debris, you're filtering good and everything else. Um, so then I guess we'd have to add in the carbon from the explosions are getting down here and, and causing a, a compounded effect. Well, I, I might have a problem with that, but, but let's, the rings really bother me. And all I can come up with is why the, why it goes down is that the shape of the cylinder head. Aircraft carriers. Wow. Yeah. I've seen some big ass um, boat ones. Um, so the cylinder head, all I'm coming up with every time out is this shape here. This shape is what's killing us. And I know that they can, a lot of them have an upward shape too, um, um, a different, different profile. This shape, I think, should somehow, they need, to, they need to figure out the pressure on this entire cylinder. They need to make a pressure gauge somehow to read how the pressure is being evaluated around here. Now, you can look at the wear, and clearly, if you got wear that's wider here, elongated, then this fort, it's telling you where the pressure is being um, resolved. It's pushing itself in this direction. It's pushing itself here. And, I'm, and you know, it, it's something else. This I'm not. I don't. I'm not proud about this deal. You need to. You need to resolve these forces much better. And make them slide down. And, and share much better. Now let me go over to this one now. Where the hell is it? On the same lines. On the same line. So what we have now is, what is the ignition point of O2 unleaded gasoline? So we 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 got that. The spark only needs to knock off what. You know, it still needs to get to 495 because the fuel coming in. Still needs to be hit. It's not. It's not going to reach that temp. It's not going to have a temperature change that quickly. Hit inside that warm uh, cylinder wall. What's 170 degrees in there or something? Nothing to cry about. Um, and we got this carbon monoxide rather coming out. That's a that's a bastard heating backwards into the car, right? Into the cylinder head. So what's our cylinder head? You guys are the mechanics. No more than 180. I never bothered temperaturing the cylinder head on the backside by the exhaust pipe and then on the other side by the intake have you guys ever you know is the temperature the same is one is one um you know is it greater than 180 but would that help scott i don't know uh, you know my theory says we just got an explosion we need to redirect so that that's where i am so it's 800 degrees, let's call it, Luna. Let's go with that, and, you know, we'll, we'll have some margin of error. Everything can be a margin of error, but we know we're not saying it's 180. It's not damn radiator temperature stuff. So if that said, that heat's got to be coming back into that engine block on that side, but it's not enough to warp anything because the coolant, coolant keeps running around and keeping it down, whatever we have. We know our coolant reaches 180. So um, we know we got some gaps and everything else and all other crap. What's that valve temperature? What is the valve temperature? I'm talking now about expansion and contraction of the heat of the valve now is what, I, what I'm going to work with because it's always pretty much in contact. You know, if you count how much is not in contact, you know, you know how much of it's in contact. That valve, the back of that valve is, is heated up. I need to figure out why the uh, carbon is built up on it in that, in, that whole, in that whole thing. Why the carbon built up? How do you get rid of that carbon? What is that carbon made of? You know, what is it made of? Is it, um, it, it's on the other side of where oil is not supposed to be, right? It's on the, uh, it's on, um, the combustion side. So I, I'm not calling it any oil. I guess I could if you drive a Chevy. <laughs> I drive a Chevy. My other truck's a Chevy. So that's my whole thing there. What is that made of? That's another one that I'm, that I'm crossing the line into. But right now, I got carbon monoxide that needs to ignite at that. 
can you reignite ignite it is what I'm driving at. What happens also under pressure, that same shit that's on the wall, what is it made of? Because it experiences pressure and then a re-explosion. I want to know what it's made of. I raced Suzuki. Oh, okay. I want to know what it's made of. What is that carbon made of? What after this explosion in the in the fuel and the air in there? What is it? What what is it? I couldn't find exactly anybody who broke it the hell down. I want to know how to recycle it or how to remove it easily using the engine's own system. We know if you called it 800 degrees, 800 degrees doesn't break it down. So we know it's a uh, well when we see it, it's, it seems like a solid, you know solid terrestrial type product like a damn rock yeah reignition doesn't happen right so um oh it, right it doesn't happen but yet it's in there my theory is 100 percent that this is not all all the gases aren't escaping and you're recycling and therefore you got a shit engine to begin with and so when you're fighting over little crap like this you're missing the point get that shit out of there and burn blow up oxygen stop trying to blow up carbon dioxide again so all these geniuses i'm saying worsen cars and putting together cars and machining cars and all that they're not working on the, this exhaust this shit out of there get it out of there you could you could probably keep the same damn engine if you can create a turbulence effect of their using your own air creates a suction effect pulling out or put a fan in there or put a little right here where these little um um oh, whatever they are thermostats or whatever put a damn something in there that creates a turbulence that will one pull this thing out. Yeah, I did that with uh, Luna. I can't help it. I hope your Luna's a guy because he's much best. Luna, I tried a uh, great uh, explosion with friction before. I used a, my skin flute and it didn't quite work. All right, look, let's go to this thing here. So I can tell you friction won't blow up a thing. <laughs> here we go. Watch this. So this guy's, you know, he's, he, if you've ever seen his channel, let me give him a little credit here. Nick's Garage, old guy, 40-something 40 40 something years doing it. Older guy, I don't mean old his age, but older. I'm saying experienced. And this baffled him. One horsepower will be the difference versus exhaust manifolds right from the factory. So that'll be a good. And of course, you see, this is my theory that all, he's lost his, it's all lost because of this turbulence created. That's it. Yeah, so we got to do it all on the same day, on the same dyno to see the results. So that's going to be pretty interesting for you guys. You're going to run it fast. Nick's test subject will be this nasty, stroked out Hemi. So it's this, I'll tell you the end result. It's going to get, and then we'll look at it. He's going to get, um, look at my notes. He's going to get, um, these are the headers, right? So he's going to get 452 horsepower. And when he breaks down on it, it puts the, um, Manifolds on he's gonna get 440. Oh hell no, I did the wrong test to get me. I gotta grab another one. Hold on. 561 on the uh headers, 561 horsepower, and he's gonna get um 517, 522 respectively on the uh well not respectively, uh because I didn't give you two the other thing to respect it too. 522 on manifold, 561 on headers. So we're gonna look at 561 right now. And then you're going to see a drop of 40, 40, 40, rounding up, 39, 39, uh, 39 uh, horsepower. Let's let it run. It's got a pretty wild cam and some tricks hidden under those weird. Supercharged, yes. I looked into that, Luna. This beginning of the video, I mentioned that, I believe. So looking into it, I want to make sure that I wasn't, my brain, you know, I like to first come up with my own theory and then I go research it. So believe it or not, I got into this car thing uh, because I had a theory that com the combustion engines were, were wrong. And so I've been working on it ever since. And so I don't like going to corrupt myself by doing it. I like to to figure it out on how I would, you know, how I would work on it or theoretically work on it. And I came up with, and then I looked at all the machine shops, you know, I wanted to see what they were fixing, not the factory stuff. And um, I looked at the horsepower testing and, and ultimately I saw what they were all missing or they're not commenting on. It's, it's the exhaust gas. They're not removing it all, but they all want to, but they all blaming it on the valve. 
and not literally the removal of it, that they're, that, that they're in a sealed unit, that they got to remove it out. So with that said, I, I, I came across with one of my, somehow I worded it, and I came across turbochargers. And I was like, oh, shit, I'm researching something that's already been done. And it was a 1940s guy that figured it out or something like that for planes, turbocharging an airplane for going up into the air for atmospheric pressure. And I was like, oh, so I thought I was done, you know, because I, I really wanted to be, you know, a superhero to myself. So I thought I was done. And then I saw how a supercharger worked under his, uh, under his uh, explanation, you know, how it worked. And, and it could work and it, it doesn't work, incidentally. It doesn't work, but you could make it work if you could make that supercharger act as a vacuum. But you can't because it gets its force from, from the, uh, the force of the exhaust system. So it's actually creating a back pressure, a loss of pressure, if you think about it, because unless it had, unless it's resolved, as you, as as you guys in the mechanic world like to call it, um, I got to look at your notes. Um, I keep forgetting it. I should write it down. You call it um, shit. You guys like to call it um, shit. don't 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 comment because unless you're going to say it because it'll make me scroll to the top. <laughs> um, vacuum scavenging. Um, I think I think that's. The, <laughs> I think it would fall under that because this vacuum scavenging seems pretty vague uh, in what you guys refer to it as. And I say you guys, you uh, you uh, motorheads. And I love this motor stuff. So uh, I think it's very intriguing. So um, um, so I, I thought, can it keep pulling? I'm visualize, I visualize it on the engine to the left here. Can it keep pulling it out as it feeds it into the compressor, right, to make the air tight, bring it down atmospheres? But its source, its source is from the exhaust port of the of the uh, cylinder pushing upwards. So all it did was is redirecting the exhaust pressure, and that would that's my theory. It should cost power. It should cost power unless you somehow are avoiding vacuum scavenging through a suction. And you can do it. I'm saying you can do it, but I don't think the, I don't think I don't know how yet. That you got to go. You have to now go to aerodynamics. And let me go over to it. Um, gas caps, gas caps. You have to make your way over to aerodynamics now. And this is the foil wing stuff. You'd have to figure out all of it. And you want the one that's going to create a suction. Now, in my engineering part of me, I know that you can create a suction on roofs a lot just by this by freaking designing an A-frame roof. That on the opposite side of that, it can create a suction and want to pull off the other side. That's what I'm saying. You need to create that negative force on the other side that wants to resolve itself. But the issue is it's such a long-ass pipe, right? The exhaust pipe is so damn long that how the hell are you going to create that? So that I, I can't really create it with all of this. It's usually this suction is resolved because you're getting back to atmospheres pressure behind here at some point to resolve itself. You got a long-ass exhaust pipe. You know, off the top of my head, I would say, how the hell are you going to resolve that in that short, in that long distance? You created such an issue. Maybe you can resolve it at the tailpipe to have a, you know, a little bit of suction that would suck in and resolve, have a sucking effect in the tailpipe going up in a tailpipe, maybe a foot. Maybe you can put some more holes in the pipe that will uh, create a suction effect as it pulls, it pushes the exhaust gases out. You know, then you got the catalytic converter, you got the EGV, all that stuff I looked into, the EGR valve, it's cycling back. That didn't, that didn't change my formula because I'm saying the whole problem is happening right after combustion. That's where you need, need to resolve it. And then uh, with looking down the road, could you pull it from the tailpipe? Can you pull it from the catalytic converter? Because you need a pulling action. Can you do it from the turbo thing you just said? Um, I couldn't find where you can do it from the turbo thing. But I found you can put a turbo on that bitch. You could put an inline exhaust fan. And start forcing that shit through to the catalytic converter or wherever you got to go. Just start forcing it through. And maybe you can do it at the end of, of, a, of what my man's doing. This would be so awesome to have a dyno test um, where you put a fan on it. So he's dyno testing this. Where the hell is his video? We'll get back to him right now and watch him run out. He's dyno testing this one. It would be so awesome if he could put an exhaust fan right after that header and start pulling. Start pulling. Uh, the issue is if you didn't have good seat valve, good valves on your exhaust, would it, would it, uh, pull out, 
would it pull a vacuum at it? Would it also pull out of your cylinder head before the ignition? I guess you'd have to time that shit. Chrome valve covers. It ought to make plenty of power with the long headers on it. See his theory? It should make it should make more power with the long headers. But it's but it's turbulence. It's not coming out. It's not exhausting. And I'm I'm not saying this. So for clarity, I'm not saying any of this has anything to do with horsepower. That none of it, the exhaust back there and all that, this horsepower is whatever the horsepower is. You then fuck it up with restrictions, with changing it. The first explosion this thing ever makes has got the most horsepower ever. After that, it's contaminated. So I'm saying you got to give it air, decontaminate it. The combustion chamber. Make it pure. Nitrogen. But then you have an explosion. I mean, how do you get rid of that then? See, look at this. 1,000 RPM to get a vacuum. It's pretty low at the power brakes. We're not going to have power brakes. Well, they can warm it up. We'll do the adjusting from there. Nick has seen countless big oh, engines. Oh, shit, Luna, that's better. awesome to have you here. Impressive numbers on his dyno. But he's never tried a side by side test to see just how much get up and go the cast iron factory manifolds would rob from this kind of setup. 40 years, he's never tried it for the robbery of it. But, but, all I'm, but I'm saying this is not doing a thing, it's not harming anything. It's just the exhaust gases can't come out. I'm gonna let you, I gotta go get something to drink, I'll put it on play. Okay, there we go. Temperature's up on 175, and here we go. And and uh, and I I would I would say it has so I gotta be careful that I'm I'm not attacking myself my own amygdala. That's why I asked, I'll say it this way then. So I'm supporting your statement because that's why I want to know what it is. If I can figure out what the what the debris on the wall is and also the complete the combustion, what took place. Um so we know it can't be air, right? We could, if it was air. So that, that, that we can't be air again. And, and I only say that. I got to use this guy's testing. He showed no O2 left, you know, under his uh, confined, whatever he did. Um, he showed no O2 left under explosions. So I can't say it's not a human where we get the exhaust air and come back with, you know, exhaust from our mouth and you get to use it again. And then one more time after that. By the time you use it again, it's not good for life. You know, you can you can breathe, rebreathe this shit once, twice. Third time you're gonna get weak. By the time you try to recycle your fourth round of air, you, you might be passing out. And of course, the same thing with with this air and the uh, the. Uh, and this is where I say to you, this one, Luna, where I was saying, can we burn the son of a bitch again? The multiple burns. What what's left? And this is where you come with uh, combustion. And this is this this is what I clicked into here yet. Yeah. So you got your atmospheric pressure, you know, uh, atmospheric air, 21% oxygen. And, you know, we, we understand that. And this is sea level stuff. What's coming out? And we look at what's coming out. Can you reburn this? So there you're saying don't assume you can't reuse it. But we can't reuse it. We can't reuse it. To, if I wanted to kill the engine. To prove we can't reuse it, I just muffle that bitch, right? I cover the uh, import, the, uh, the uh, um, import, the uh, input, the uh, air handler, the, uh, just block that shit off. If I can block all the air off, it's going to use whatever's air inside that engine that it can pull from the tubes, et cetera, and then boom, it's done. It won't keep running. You give it no air, no, no O2, it won't keep going. O2 is the, is the, is the beautiful creature of this whole thing, right? The O2 is, is what's so explosive. Under compression, the compressed air, the O2, is this explosive is what I asked next. I didn't go in this one, so I look at the gravity and I look at everything else. This one, I have to go down each one because I can't find anybody that's bottled up the shit from an exhaust from a car. 
And that wouldn't be the same as this anyway, because I would want it from the right from where we're talking about from the headers. I've hadn't found anyone that's bottled it up from the exhaust from the headers and then try to run it back in as fuel. I would love to find that because that's what I'm talking about. The uh, recycling of this stuff. You're, you're hitting on exactly what I said when I want to find something that, that makes engines more, more beautiful, more, more efficient. Right now they're, they're exploding air. Isn't that beautiful? With the, there's a touch of fuel that they're making O2 compressed air explosive. Awesome. Can you, you know, can you get the oxygen levels down even more and then recycle it? Well, we know we can recycle it to some degree because they recycle it, what, the EGR stuff? EGR stuff's got to recycle some of that crap. Some of the, it takes part of the exhaust and bringing it back in. And then to me, that's just nasty. You're just, uh, the EGR, yeah. Using that ex exhaust gas, EGR stuff, um, you know, re recycling the, the carp, the uh, shit. You already got that in a shit engine, you know, with the, what I'm saying, you can't burn again. What do you have here? What? It already did that in rotary. What did it do? We're talk Luna, are we talking like EGR stuff here? That when you say that you recycle it, or are you talking the straight from exhaust, exhaust pipe right back into the uh, exhaust pipe gases back into the um, air breather? Somebody read this shit. See, we need the air, right? And the uh, engine runs rich, um, right? We know about the fuel thing. Because that stuff's just changing the, the, the fuel mixture to make the EGR work too, right? It, it has to change it. Or it wouldn't work if the EGR is not talking to the fuel manifold saying this much now because I'm because I'm not giving you regular air. I'm giving you shit now. I'm recycling shit. And so I'm going to give you this much fuel now because I can't create an explosion with uh, with that shit air unless I change my fuel ratio. Is that if I got that right or wrong, you can let me know. How would I find that? How would I find that, Luna? I want to see the thing and an old engine, not this EGR stuff, because that, that's well, I guess it would that would still work. Nope. Um I can't find any um But I started to look for it. I didn't do it. How much O2? I, I forgot to look at how much O2 was in there. It was left. And I started to, and one of my things took me away. Um, I started to look into it to see how much was left. And this is what we're talking about, you and I, right now, about the recycling the air, right? So I need to know how much O2 is left inside of it. But for that, I came over here to find out right here. And it was, I got this far on it. CO2, H2O, which is water, of course, N2, N2 and O2. So how are you going to resolve the water? You know, is it more water in there now than before? As we look to the left, chemistry-wise, um, it's a different product coming out. You're getting, you're getting this different product because you have the fuel-air mixture. And the fuel had an explosion, and this apparently is what's is, you know reported by my Ohio education website. I found this is what's coming out. This is what you're saying is combustible, and we're talking obviously not the water or, hyd or O2. I was actually thinking, how do you make damn hydrogen come out the back door of it and make your engine run on hydrogen and uh, and damn regular fuel at the same time? 
how can you use the exhaust? So my craziness is, my craziness, how do you make that the exhaust turn, the, the combustion from the engine, refuel a um, hydrogen uh, tank? How does it, how do you flip this over to hydrogen? How can you take this and make hydrogen? Then it's storage and then you flip over and now the car runs on hydrogen until you, you know, run it cycles again from fuel to hydrogen back to fuel again. That's that's my craziness in my head. How do you make that exhaust make hydrogen? Now here's your EGR stuff that I was, you know, as I, as you were talking about recycle the exhaust. In his diagram, he has the uh, a flat a flat head on top of here, and magically it pulls out all exa exhaust. Not you know uh, clearly it's left behind. You know, there's no choice but to leave behind some exhaust because there's no vacuum here to pull it out. And it and in, and it can't anyway because there's only one valve. There's only one valve open, not two. You can't even get a, a draft, which I was hoping. So part of my theory, and I think it, I think they do have something like this. I think somebody said it on one of the channels, something. I was like, ah, oh, I bet you that's what he's referring to. Whereas this, just before you uh, close this and take the open the intake, um, let the intake um, open for a moment to see if it can suck out some of this nasty gas. That's my uh, thinking with my fan idea. Like, say a fan was here, exhaust fan, that this would open because you got a negative pressure. You're still trying to pull from, which is not efficient as. Maybe you can open this just for a second. It creates a draft and sucks it out. You know, maybe it you know, sucks out, you know, 95% of it. Now you're only dealing with 5%. But, but it's working in such fast timing that if you left it, once it's opening, you had the fan going, you know, maybe out of that what's left, maybe you only, get, maybe you only pull out 40% of it and 60% stays by, stays back. But this air pressure might help if this opened air wanting to fill it up and uh, you know especially if it's a ram dam if you had an air in line in line air pushing air that way then i could really see it happening because it would be forcing its way in here and then forcing its way out of the compartment at top dead center even just that this is a, a point where it's rotating over the dropping that open uh, a little bit of lag time as the air forces in here it forces it's still open forces the air out now you got fresh air in there and the sand fan on this side is pulling this then closes, and so you only lost this much air volume, and it, start, it closes. Oh, it stays open. What the hell am I saying? It's still forced air coming in, and it sucks it down. This one closed. Sucks it down, closes off, and you start your cycle of explosion. Air pressure, I'm saying add some. Add some, like the turbo thinking almost. Force it in there. Force it in and out to get rid of it and then get your, your your awesome clean combustion of air not this nitrogen i mean not this mixture of uh of crap so here's his answer 561 horsepower for 548 on torque um i lost you guys let me grab you um where'd you go let me see your comments real quick 18 okay Now maybe we got lag time, but I, I did say air, right? The beautiful thing of O2 specifically. The O2 is the compressive explosive one is what I'm saying in, in that scenario with the fuel igniting. Fuel is, uh, yes, yeah, 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 right here. I'm sorry, I'm reading real slow here. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm with you on that. In fact, the vapors, you're igniting the vapors, not actually the, uh, not actually the liquid, not actually the liquid. It's the vapors you're, you're trying to ignite. Um, the ignition. 18 wheel diesel. Oh, I never said it's going to be safe, Luna. I agree. Yeah, hydrogen can be very dangerous, right? Well, I never said it was going to be safe. 561 horsepower, 548. I'm just saying it's not complete combustion, and it's not complete, um, you know, because we know it's coming out of exhaust pipe to a degree. Not complete combustion. That the that the, uh, that the combustion that is happening is not so is not properly aligned. That that. Let's see if I can find it. Um, Let 
This is a uh, both of these might work. This one is a uh, snagabadaba um, shape charged by Amana Twelve. Let's go with shape charge. Right, conventional shape charges are filled with high explosive in a factory. Right. Um, this is something that um, I designed for filling by the user. It means that it can travel on airplanes and so on without DIY infection. shape charges. Exactly that. Now, in this case, um, we're going to go back to probably the first uh, type of liner. This is called the liner that was used in the shape charge. That's just a cone of copper, isn't it? It's is indeed. And then having that copper on there, I guess it's the the, the sort of the equivalent of using um, a bullet or a cannonball. So the same, you know, if you if you go and just fire an, an, an empty kind of cartridge, then you get a, a loud bang and an explosion, but nothing that's going to do any significant harm. Whereas if you put a, a, a like a bullet in the end of it, if you see what I mean, and fire it, then it pushes out something of a significant mass, and that can do some some damage. Yes, the great advantage is that this metal travels enormously faster than any cannonball. I'll show you what I mean. If you put plastic explosive in here and then you push this copper cone into the explosive, when I initiate at this end, a detonation wave travels from here to there. Right. The first thing it hits is the apex of the cone. Yes. The uh yes, Luna, and this is what we're talking about, the shape charge. I'm saying the whole head is wrong. They need to redirect this explosion, and, and let's go with the shape charge guy. Him, him, I've never seen this video, so and that I, I don't know where, the cone it is might be wrong. Forward. The but, whole cone is collapsed. In fact, it, it collapses in such a way that it turns inside out. Right, because the end bits hit first, and that starts moving. Wow, that's and, an astonishing thing to get your head around, though. <laughs> right. It is a, very, a bit of a shock at first. What happens is that the inner part of the copper, not the whole the whole mass of it by any means, the inner part of the copper um, forms into a sort of wire, which is called a jet. And that's not molten. It's a, it's a, it's still solid copper. Yes, but coming not in that direction, coming that direction. Of course, yes. Counterintuitive. And then that almost like piles in like a nail through the steel driving its way in yes it pushes the target material out of the way and and it pushes it aside as the tip of the jet hits the steel yep. and flows back along the outside of the rod then there's a new increment of metal it is constantly being replaced when it's all used up it stops won't go any deeper yes. are we in any kind of position that we can try this and i can oh, see absolutely. this box i'm pleased to tell you is full of explosive <laughs> what i'll do i can see for but <laughs> it is actually much easier to use for filling charges you can just ram it in and then put put the cone in we're going to test it with what looks like an impossibly solid at which the jet will be at its most penetrating before it breaks up. So the charge has legs to hold it the right height from our target. See you in about two minutes. Yes, and don't pack. I won't. One. Yeah. They better, so have, better have some slow, slow speed. It's seems astonishing because that, that is such a massive thump that yeah. something extremely accurate will have occurred from that. Well, let's see. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, it's gone in <laughs> at least that deep because I can push that in. But there, see, it could that explosion. It happened. It could have blown 360 degrees per everybody else thinking. But because of the shape of his device, it was directed. All of it was directed down. Well, not all of it, but it was directed downward from that little plastic cup. And that's what I'm saying is that they're missing with the explosion and the engines. They're directing. They're just. It's like they're just having a wild ass explosion without trying to control anything. That a cylinder head is the stupidest thing ever. The design of it. It's just. It's an explosion each time out. So we're not arguing that it's compressed air. You have an explosion every time out but they're not controlling it properly to run down the piston to, to the face of the piston downward they put it in this department and this whether it likes it or not creates a shape charge because since it's a confined it's, it's in a confined space it's going to have to re so it's going to explode all of that compressed air in there we know that right the compressed air it's going to have an explosive effect 
But these shapes and the shape of the piston are going to direct. They're going to fight each other. This one on this wall being round, that one on that wall being round over here, they're all going to run against each other. Crazily so, canceling out energy, canceling each other out, right into each other, and then trying to push, redirect down that silly ass piston that's shaped, that shape a uh, piston head, um, uh, piston head, right here. Whatever. Design. Oh, great. You know, seeing these crazy designs here, uh, images. And and that there, I mean, that looks more balanced, actually. But it, it's not. You know, it's it's uh it's good as they can get. Images. I can't say it's not. I didn't I didn't measure the freaking thing. Um smooth. I like the smooth idea. At least you're going to get an equal reaction all the way around it unless the top of the head has that weird ass shape. That's what I'm saying. They need to figure out how the forces are going to react when you blow up against that head, how they come out. Because that's where it's pushing downward from. Um, and we know it's pushing downward from it. The damn it has no choice because the head is the one that's bolted down. So it's pushing like a spring from the, from the inside the cylinder head downwards. Um, great. I try to pull up put cylinder heads and I get everything but cylinder heads or 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 what, what we're looking for. Um, look at the shape of that one. So how can these forces be the same? If the explosion takes place in there, I mean theoretically it could be if you had a head that was had the opposite shape of this. That shape looks nice. Er, but more, more. Make it round. Make it round because you're redirecting from here downwards. And same thing with here. Same thing with here. Just like a spit gun. You know how you can control a spit gun, you guys, for a difference. Remember in a straw, you could spit the tube. Well, it's shitty if you're starting off with this is your part of your spit gun tube. This is just shitty. No wonder pistons can't last long. They all act all crazy. If you're if you're having the forces go up here one so the force up here if this thing blows up something if a shape charge blows up in front of it on top of it clearly this is going to be hitting this the forces hit this first and since it's further away it's this second oddly though oddly is that there are some people to theorize that the explosion happens Every which way, everywhere, like like a spark of everywhere. It's not just the everything, but I think that's just uh, you know you, you got to have a, more tests like this to see how the explosion really looks. You need even be deeper than that. I get this is in black and white. I love to see how it really looks even tighter than this. This is NASA's thing. This is what we would try to counter. This is on a round cell though. It's a round disc. That disc we show, these cylinder heads are not round. But you see the explosion, though, over the center when you're looking at it in one atmosphere. Just one atmosphere. So let, let's let's just say that's an exaggeration. It looks pretty consistent. At one atmosphere, if you can have the one explosion, it's one right down the center. At two atmospheres, it got a little oblong. Perhaps it's oblong there, too. Oblong shape, this little line here, and a, and a little bit there, flat there. Three atmospheres, pretty much round out. But look at the balance is what I'm driving at. Look at the beautiful balance. Perhaps I'm getting confused with this. Uh, this is a line marker for deviation. Um, so I can't count that as sticking in. It's just a marker, I believe. But if you look at it, it's smooth. And that was from a center pointed explosion. If that's the theory, if that theory holds true, that means wherever your, your spark plug is, is where your explosion starts from and point outwards, wherever it starts. So wherever you have the explosion at, your timing, if you can look, imagine a spark plug in a straight line, where it would hit would be your, your center forces working its way in a round, beautiful pattern, outwards. Outwards. And so that's what I said. I said, but, I said, but, but to you when I said, but. So if, if that statement holds true, then we get this. You know, I talk, I played my own devil's advocate, but here we go. So if that statement holds 
Um, nope. If that statement is true and the spark plug is on an angle from this cylinder, well, then it hits this on an angle. And if it hits it on an angle and it starts working its way around, the forces hit the outside edge first, which drives this into the wall, which then puts the skirting on this side in danger of rubbing as it's going down and puts this ring in this part as the wear section. If it was dead center above it, under their motion, it would hit here, go out circular motion wise, hit this wall, then push this one against the wall. So it's not like a plunger coming down. What they're what the NASA is stating or showing it as as, uh, as their evidence is that explosion is not like a plunger, but it's more like a pinpoint in an outwards direction, just like a uh, shape charge. Works pretty much that way. So the heads. Or what I have an issue with also freaking head location so if I was gonna shop a shop a high high car I'd want my I want to know where my spark plug is in relationship to the set to the uh, to the um, a piston and I don't want to know the shape of this that would be number one for me and then go from there I mean, if you figure that out then I, you'd probably figure out the rest of making this also equally round that this should be the same shape as close as possible to redirecting the forces back downwards and not holding them in there so flat flat would actually help you seal this so even though we're talking about seals and all that if the explosion took place down below wherever this spark plug is it's going down i don't know what's coming back you know and you know and theoretically it's the same forces coming backwards right so then you would have the forces coming flatwards back and closing closing these seals these valves off or making sure they stay closed rather, you know, and you know, um, locking them in the forces of it. And that's where we look. Maybe that's the burning we see that the initial blow up that we're seeing is at the top on the cylinder and also on um, what do you call this? The, uh, the roof, whatever the hell they call that. What do you guys call that? The head of the head or something like that. Um, let me pull over to them. Um, I'll see your comments in a second. I'm trying to find that. That one pissed this one. I'm trying to show you this one. So Val face. Thanks, Lou. I don't want to tell, I don't want to go down the shape charge thing anymore, but the shape charge is, is, is very important, I think. Using NASA study on how this works, I visualized the explosion, believe it or not, as no shape because I didn't, because it, I had everything blowing up in the compartment and then the forces resolving themselves by pushing the piston down, piston down. NASA is saying that, as you can see it, is that, I to, based on the 2001 thing is it appears that, that, that that's what a lot of people thought but the explosion is, is pinpointed and then in an outwards motion which is uh makes it more like a shape shape charge which in theory means then this almost you could this would be secondary to your shape so your piston your piston shape would want to be able to take the shape charge so you'd cone it actually kind of cone it upwards i guess i don't know you want the forces to go downwards Maybe maybe cone it up with I'm talking out loud with you. So it hit the dead center of it. It pushes the center the piston down evenly from the dead center of it, driving it downwards, going up the bowl of the uh, piston if it was if it was like cone shape, invert convex. Yeah, convex. Pushing downwards, so most of the forces would still be focusing on the piston going down, because we really don't want any forces po coming back here at all. Ideally. And you want all the forces, all the explosion to send the piston all the way down to get your horsepower. So if Nash is right, then that's directional. And if they're and if they're wrong, it's it still comes out that ultimately, even if it's directional, the force is still going to come backwards. You sort of think shoot up in the air. And when they shoot up in the air, then they're going to push back down again. And 
and whatever's the most symmetrical to the hey look at this we're looking at one that's symmetrical what the hell am i saying the other one was a uh, weird shape this one's a uh, symmetrical like a cylinder and there i guess that's the shape but yeah that's the shape of the cylinder there this one actually would perform the best right on my whole theory thing what is this clapping lapping valves okay so this one this head would perform the would in, in theory should perform to give you the most horsepower for the bang than any other any than that crappy one i just saw unless by chance it refunnels the damn forces perfectly all right here the rest of this video let's hear the rest of this guy he's um twerking and pull number one with the headers on the big hemi produces 561 horsepower and 548 torque we just did one pool, so now we're going to do another pool back to back, just to make sure all the numbers are correct. And uh, then from there on, we're going to take it in front of the exhaust manifolds. Test number two. We're testing it again. Same, same, uh, same setup. So the second test. I'm going to fast forward to the end test. Power pack to clean, so we're ready to make test number three with the exhaust manifold. That's so nice. now we're going to remove our two and one inch headers. So here is the where they're connected to the uh, four in one header, way up here. But the next header, watch where they connect. It's gonna be you know with the, with the extension. And we're gonna take our factory exhaust manifolds and put them on and do a back to back test and see what happens. Luna, can you use the heat? Can you also use the heat of the engine to help pull away the uh, pull away that that air inside the uh, combustion chamber? You know that that's what I looked into as far as um I'm gonna read that comment again as far as Pulling away the heat. I was trying to find the, uh, this is exhaust gas temperature rating, something on there. If you can use heat, because heat likes to go to colder. If you can use heat to help you pull it to something colder. Uh, we don't need EGR valve stuff up. I dumped that. Um, if you can use heat, their own heat to pull it away. And this redirect, right? The whole thing is pushing down. So even though this flops around, because of the clearances, it does take that bounce on the wall a little bit, but it is pushing this down. And I have to say pulling it down also. Pulling it down and pushing it down to rotate it. We know that and then it changes the time and it keep everything going brrr, all together. I've looked at this in quite a few ways and I found the, uh, somebody did do a study on the heat. One of those guys did uh, based on uh, thin rings versus thick rings. And the thick rings, uh, the thin rings gave you, gave you more horsepower Oh, eight, eight pounds or uh, eight, um, eight more horsepower if you use thinner rings and yet they still last the same length, uh, time so reportedly. So the thicker rings don't, you don't get enough, you do not get an advantage of it apparently. And it actually costs you horsepower. And part of that guy's theory was, let me turn the, uh, crank shaft while it was, uh, still on the engine, unstart, you know, not, not started, just turn the crank shaft. And see the resistance. It took 30, and he used that torque wrench, 35 pounds of force to rotate. When he put the thinner rings on, he, it came to 14 pounds to rotate. Um, yeah, 14 pounds to rotate. So then they did the test to see if it would, uh, if that would even made a difference, you know, if, you know, just out of curiosity, correlation stuff. And it, it, the one with the thinner rings, the 14 pounds to rotate the crank, um, came down to eight more pounds of horsepower you got out of it. And the only thing they did different was change the rings out. I'm sorry, they made sure they started with new pistons and the clearances were the same um, on everything. I hope they checked the clearances and rings and all that for fairness. They cut the video pretty fast, but you know, it looks like that guy looked trustworthy. It was the, uh, you've seen him on videos perhaps. I'll show you him. Um, but let's see. Hey, you can take up the headers, one of the manifolds, and we're gonna compare the two and see what the results gonna be. Okay, Longer pipe now, she's going there. I didn't get any 
Sometimes we drink them with red. These are the four company designs. Motors not are not top. Make them good. The fit good. Change the price and time. Put that in print. First test with the same RPMs, same water temperature. Air fuel ratio is the same as before with the headers. So let's make a test, and here goes test number three. Vasily were expecting a drop in power, but even they're surprised by what they're seeing. All right, Vasily, print this, and then print out the one before we did, okay? Uh, I want to match apples with apples. Nick wants to do a second back-to-back -back test, just like he did with the headers. Then he'll look at done? all the numbers together. We're just going to make one more pull. Uh, there's a bit of restriction though. The manifolds are stripped out much, man. That's cr that's crazy. That's, that's, that's ridiculous. Right? That's crazy. But it's crazy. How much I see the restriction is like wow. Chrysler put two big carbs on the 426 so that it could breathe. Now that this one is a 472, it looks like it needs a little help getting all those combustion gases out of the cylinders. You ready? Yeah. Let's go. What's the answer? You see that? This is the headers. We maxed out the horsepower at 6200 RPM. He, was, he said he was going to run the test at the same RPMs, but apparently it didn't matter because it, the horsepower changed, the, the, the band, right? It changed. They maxed out at 6200 RPMs, but the other one maxed out at, uh, look at my notes real quick. Um, The other one got maxed out at 5,800, 889.7 RPMs. Put 0.7 on it? I guess I must have seen his notes. At 561, 5624 with the headers. So we're in the 560 range of horsepower at 61, 6200 RPMs. On the torque range, 44, 45 with the headers again. Look at that, 549, wow, 550 torque. torque. This is the way it ran with the headers. And running the same water temperature, and here we go. After you install the exhaust manifolds, the torque came in at the same RPM. But as you can see, we had an average of 522. 5 I like how you said the same water temperature. You know, you know, theoretically, same engine temperature, right? 17. So we lost an average of 25 foot pounds of torque at the same RPM. Versus horsepower, instead of coming out later at 6200 RPM, it came in earlier at 57, 59 on our RPM with a loss of about 60, 65 horsepower. It's horsepower change. I mean, is the, the the band right? It it came in at fifty seven hundred, where it was fifty eight eighty nine, almost fifty nine hundred. The maximum horsepower jumped up. It came in at fifty seven hundred. Very interesting on that. 
only thing changed was again that the the uh, he changed the headers. He changed the headers. I mean, he changed the exhaust. But the horsepower came in is what I see as a big teller earlier. Then everything after that was just shit. You know, it was it didn't, didn't, couldn't get anything else out of it above fifty seven hundred. Which is what we got here, four ninety nine and four eighty two. Let's see if these numbers. It's uh, 58. He lost 5,900. Lost even more. 6,000. But he, I guess he was in it for in it to win it. You know, he went to see what happened at 6,300. He really dropped off. So he couldn't even. Uh, that's just a waste. That's just rotation. How much rotation is at a waste spot? Another 500 RPMs. Six uh, 600 RPMs. And you that little bit. 600 more RPMs. He lost, uh, shit, 50, 50 uh, horsepower. I said, yeah. Or is that the torque? Um, that is the, uh, that is the, uh, that's the torque. That's the torque I wrote down. So it's torque drop. Where the hell is the horsepower? Over here then? Oh, there's, it's the opposite. We lost about 65, average 65 horsepower versus the headers. And that's there you so that's what he says he lost. Doing that, doing that thing there. So nothing changed in the engine, but he lost all of that power. And I'm saying it's because of the bad. I know you don't like it, uh, Luna. I'm saying it's the bad, um, the recycled crap. Since it's the same engine, same engine, just change it out a few minutes later, temperatures change. I mean, everything is the same on that. It's uh, only thing changed was his exhaust. Not the compression didn't change, anything else changed. All that was the same. Oh, he should have ran the test again with the, uh, put the other one back on again, just for my little raggy ass. But the only thing changed there was air. The airflow inward didn't change. He still got the same amount of air. Only thing changed was exhaust. And I'm saying it's what you call, maybe that's what you call it, but it, I'm saying it's, uh, look at my notes again, what you guys call it again. Shit. I'll put it in red ink. I could have put it in a different ink. Uh, But I'm not done with that. I'll give you one more for you. Go back. I think two. I think in this one, I got to go back twice. Maybe three times. Edelbrook. Uh, this oh, this one, he changes the, uh, uh, tries Edelbrook cast iron, but he stars it with oxygen. And it doesn't put out the other one, but it wasn't fair. This one wasn't fair. Never mind. Because he didn't use the right adapter on top, and he didn't want to. He actually said he didn't want to mess up his adapter to change it out. So what do you get? What do you expect? All right. So this guy was a. Uh, oh, your team. Oh, this was the guy I was trying uh, to find. What you see here, probably the best you can buy in our industry. Uh, the rocker gear, the heads, they're all falling. In. Look at that. That's the dragster. That's what I was trying to find all this time. They're round. They match up. This is 3,000 horsepower. 3,000 horsepower creating this beautiful round bowl. Look where the spark is, though. Look where he put the spark. I don't know what angle that is, but look at that. Whack one of them pistons. It's the day over. Uh, the rocker gear, when you've got a valve spring around the 500 pound of the seat, it's about 1,300 pound when the can's got it up. Look at that thing. Perfectly Open matching up round. Got a dirty old push. Huge ass exhaust. Rod and a poor little lifter holding that thing open to let the air in. Look at that. Beautifully round. So my answer to all that crap again is, uh, you know, this is the shape charge explosion happening there. You want on the other side of that shape charge, you want the receiving end of something that's willing to give. A nice crank that's willing to turn. Nice cylinder walls that really let it slide with a little bit of friction. That means it's thinner rings. And... Let it happen again. And the complete combustion, of course, is whatever. You know, th this is kind of, of course, they clean this up. He said they break it down every time. But that, is that, 
Is that the closest you can get, you think, Luna? To uh, burning up, because whatever this bowl is, you're still left with that amount of gas. Oh, in his case, he's blowing it. He's got it exposed to the outside, too. Back out so the motor can make all that horse. So we keep talking about the valve train really is probably one of the top things of our motor. Hemispherical. Okay, thank you. The, the valve size is probably where it's at because we run a blower on top of the motor and have a ton of boost going in there. You need the biggest possible valve you can have in a motor. So our valves are probably nearly three times bigger than any road. But look at his valves. That one looks different than that one. Maybe it's lighting, but they look different to me. They look like they're taking a lot of, uh, well, I don't know what they're burning, right? They're burning whatever car. they burn. So our exhaust valve is probably the same size as a streetcar's intake valve. And our intake valve is pretty much the size of a Coke can. So um, if you can fit a Coke can in your ports, you're doing pretty good. But I can tell you now in drag racing, bigger is better because we need airflow. When you've got 60 odd pound on top of a valve seat, you need to be able to flow it. So if the heads don't flow it, um, air is nothing. No good to us. 15 years ago, uh, lubrication in the heads probably wasn't so good because if you broke it, you just fix it and come back out. Nowadays, we look for reliability. And with the cast roll edge range, they make sure that our push rods, our lifters, and our camshaft, and they're, our they're valves, sponsored, and everything They're sponsored by like cast roll. I caught on to that because they hit, they hit, they hit it uh, every time. Cast oil. Um, I want to see if we see the cylinders. I guess it's the same guy. I'm not subscribed to him. I just found him for my for this for the video stuff. I can tell you that too. That setup won't run a Porsche. Uh -huh. But what he did is he ran a 412 and 440. He went to Sykes then and ran a 412. Previous to Henson Racing Engines, I've built engines for a lot of race cars for people in the past, but I was generally a diesel mechanic. I worked for International for 15 years. Uh, the market got so big in the racing industry, and I ended up leaving that job and opening Henson Racing Engines. Nice. Me a lot. I met Trent through a mutual friend who also drag races that lives here locally, and Trent was in the meantime, he was on the East Coast working on a lot of pro stock development stuff. Uh, back in the early 80s, Trent worked under a gentleman by the name of Lee Shepard, which was one of the pro stock gods in the drag racing world at the time. So there's a good buddy cutting his seats. And I got this part of the whole thing about porting or not. It's all air drag. They're so worried about balancing and everything else, which I find, uh, you know, I find that very, uh, very stupid for the most part. I mean, you want a nice machine piece of tool here, but, but they get the balancing this. And I'm like, how long do you think it's supposed to stay balanced for whatever the hell you think you balanced? I, 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 that one's got me, uh, that's just ridiculous because your theories, if you balance it, it works. Then that means you never got to balance it again. That's it, because for some reason it's not affected by anything. The seat part. This is the killed me on their seats. I love the. Uh, so that's that multi-angle one. Yeah. Gets them so concentric and so straight. Flows better. Makes all kinds of difference. One of the things that i have learned in uh, building engines for race cars especially working on my own is you can make all the power in the world you want to but if that surface won't take it or the car you're putting it in is not built for that kind of power power management is key we have really learned a lot of power management and how to make things work in cars that they shouldn't be working in or on surfaces that they shouldn't be working on Extravagant money making job. You don't get rich by doing this kind of stuff. We have to do like everybody else. We have to recess and then the evening recess or morning recess and then the evening recess. Right. It was a. Uh, so the other guy is going to cut it. Let me get rid of him. The other guy cuts. I got to show that guy. Cut, 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 cut. Airfoil. That's what I'm talking about. Get that thing to suck it out. I mean, that's about the size of it.
And then you got fresh air to burn. To uh, to burn. This guy is seats. Take your cutter. Got it. To the pilot, and then the gonna get so yes, you get rid of that bottom material. That's why a radius cutter is so good because it relieves all that bottom material, so the air having to go all the way around. So you can do your compression test, right? And that would, um, Hemi, does the explosion care how much of a gap you got between there? You ever think about that, Hemi? Does it does explosion care how much of a gap you got between there? If it's uh if it's got that much force, how, what's the force inside there? Did you know I I couldn't quite figure it out. Um, but I'm saying create a suction to flex, get the better air. That's about the, that's that was the size of my whole the gist of the whole entire project. That yeah, you can do that, make it nice and neat and all that other stuff. But it's the air you're removing. And the direction of the explosion that you want to take care of. Yeah, so That's a 45, the 60, and 30 degree. coated back cut, undercut intake valve we were just talking about. Note that the 30 is right up to the edge of where the coating begins, and the narrower stem is intended to let more air flow around it. This is the before shot. Mark is going to lap this in to see where the seat hits the face of the valve. Hey, hey uh, Hemi, you uh, did you do you believe in uh, the power drill one, or just uh, or just hand lapping like that? So Hemi, I got a, my little fast little one for you. Is um, your compression? I got you. The uh, um, you had to get that stroke right, so you can get the stroke we're talking about. Get the cam rotation. So uh, I'm uh, I, I kind of laugh about it a little bit because if if, the, if you have an explosion in there, that means you had compression. See, so you had compression if you had an explosion. And is it the same? Watch this, Hemi. Is it the same? So what if I had an? Ex I, I do a compression test, right? Get, 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 get. Well, that was just air pressure, right? Get, 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 get. But an explosion inside there now. If all things considered, an explosion goes against the walls and start pushing, would an explosion not create a better seat for me? So how much? Did I, how much am I really losing by low? If I, long as I can get an explosion. Oh, I love it. I, Luna, I, I think it's pretty, man. It's, it's pretty as hell. But what I'm saying is that the explosion on the other side under, because it's compression too we need. Everybody, you know, they're all based on compression being an issue. Leak down test, all that good stuff. But just a compression test only. Oh, we know that. Just to see if I get lucky and found anything. Yeah, too fast. Too fast, too fast. Well, I, I have, I've got my other part of me that says it's not possible, that, that this is 100% wrong, too. I, I get it's not readable to you and I. Well, you know, it's happened so fast. But something transpired. 